Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted Podcast. It's me, I'm here with the Greg Wilson. Hey, hey, hey. Or Greg Romero Wilson. I That's can't, right. Either a, one. I, you know what? That's the thing is I don't really... You know what I mean? Because in many ways, I am still the Greg Wilson. Yes. You know, but at the same time, I'm I'm Greg Romero Wilson. I mean, I'm not, yes. you know, I mean, they're the same guy. Right. Exactly. Uh, so I don't mind either way. Right. So uh, I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen, people, marijuana is legal in California. You can get it delivered wherever you are. Okay. Wherever you are, they will come to you and they deliver everything from vape pens to CBD oil to uh, to everything to like marijuana. They have Marijuana beef jerky to marijuana gum. That's crazy. What is that? What is that? THC. Now? Marijuana uh, everything. Everything. CBD and the CBD oil. I've been taking it. Has been helping me out a lot. Okay, just with pain. I was doing Muay Thai. My feet are. Just, I'm not kicking right. They're all bright red. Everything's uh, in pain. And I take this stuff, and I'm telling you, it makes me feel so much better. So I strongly, strongly recommend it. Uh, so check it out. Um, make sure you take it, and uh, and, and they're good people. Uh, they're they're really really good people. Also, uh, I mentioned roasted. You get ten dollars off, a hundred dollars or more. Don't go to a dispensary and get in your car and possibly just wait all this time and spend all this money. And then you, they give you, hey, want to taste this one? But the bud tenders are hot and they're getting you to taste stuff. And next thing you know, you're getting your car and you get a, a, a DUI. Okay, there's, there's no point. Bueno, all right. Trust me on this one. Order it. <laughs> no bueno. Also, Santa Cruz Medicinals. They make potent lab tested CBD formulas. They're 1,000 milligram CBD infused coconut oils. Amazing to add to your coffee. Put it in my coffee and I'm like, whoa, my day just got better. Okay. I yeah. feel better. <laughs> and they, uh, and they're, they're olive oil. I, my wife cooks olive oil. We make chicken. We make steak with this. And it just, the food tastes better. I'm more relaxed. I'm a happier human being. Okay. Uh, all kinds of stuff helps me with pain, and this stuff is gluten free, sugar free, lab tested, and affordable. Use the code MMA Roasted for five dollars off your order. They also have a, have a new vape pen, and uh, it's really, really good. Okay, I, I've been using it, and they don't they don't fuck around. It's not just cheap stuff. You don't. You know, uh, they have they have a CBD face mask. It's a it's a clay mask. Okay, you put oh, it on wow. your face, uh, and it helps inflammation and redness, and it helps you look better. Okay, they also have a CBD infused vaporizer. I should probably get that. You should. I should. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, check them out. Uh, follow them at Santa Cruz Medicinals. Uh, follow them on Instagram, and uh, also if you uh, mention the code MMA Roasted, you get five dollars off your order. So uh, I just got back. We're talking about. I was in uh, Miami, Oklahoma. I thought it was Miami. It's Miami. That's of course it is, because it's like because you know they're you know they're country. What are you gonna do? They pronounce things weird. I was in Miami, Oklahoma. Can um, I tell you something? When yeah. I my family first moved to Texas when I was a kid, I go to school and you know and I, I'm you know learn about. I come home and I'm like, no, Dad, I want a football that's genuine leather. He goes, what? I go genuine leather, like the R and B singer. And he goes, he, he goes, what? Who told you to say it like that? He goes, that's what I said. That's the way my teacher says it. Yeah. It's genuine leather. He goes, the word is genuine. <laughs> genuine leather. Yeah. But they say genuine. Like, I mean, it's the South. They just do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No. That's so uh, the shows were good. It was funny. It was, it was a fun. It, it was, there were fun, fun shows. The club was awesome. Uh, but it was like, there was one show where there's a couple in the front and actually a couple and, and their daughter. And, yeah. uh, and I was like, oh, you guys married. And then she's like, oh, he's, he's my fourth husband. Right. That was I go, OK, I go, you know, watch what happened to the first three. You know what happened there? And then the, the girl there, the daughter, <laughs> she was like, they're still my cousin. <laughs> daughter, we're divorced, but we're still related. The daughter who was like in her 20s, you know, she had a tattoo that said Roberto or something. Right. So I, I go, where's Roberto? And she's like, oh, he's in jail. Uh, I go, OK, what is he in jail for? She's like, having a gun. In California. I go, OK, all right. Well, I'm like, do you visit him? Do conjugal visits? She's like, I'm not allowed to because I was in jail, too. Oh. I go, what were you in jail for? She's like, oh, selling drugs. So I'm like, okay, all right. What a crowd. So then I go, uh, anybody have ta later on, I go, anybody have tattoos? And then the guy, the couple said, oh, yeah, I have you and me on my boob. And then the husband was like, and I have me and you on my boob. And then I go to the daughter, do you have me and six, four, seven, you know? <laughs> And then she's like, no, actually, it's five five. She knew exactly. She knew the number. No, it's inmate five five eight nine three four six. Yeah. So, so that was uh, that was that was my time in Miami. But it was fun. It was a fun fun show. Came back, uh, you know, drove back, took two 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 flights. Actually, on the way there, I'm sitting there and you know I'm tired. I stay up all night. I had a actually it was a 
a, 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 a red eye. I had a show at like, I don't know, 8.30 at the yeah. Ice House and then drove right from the Ice House to the airport. And then I had a layover in Houston and I get on the flight and uh, there's like, this guy gets next to me and I can tell there's open seats. So I go over to the, those seats and of course, like as I'm there, the, you know, they keep, oh, the seat's taken. So I go back. And the guy's like, was oh. it Southwest? No, it was oh. it was like Delta or something. Okay. But these people weren't in the seats. And th- and then the guy's like, oh man, I thought my last flight was small, you know. But now he's in my, he's like hanging over. Like here's the seat cushion. Oh, he's the all worst. the way, and I'm like, and now I, do I like nudge him, you know? Because he's clearly not even like on half the seat rest. Like he's, he's fully into your seat. He's over my seat, right? That's the worst. So I was going to like start like, I'm like, what the fuck am I taking Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu if I can't get this guy out of my seat, you know? Yeah. So I start to kind of take my hand and push his hand and I look over and I see on his arm has SS, the Nazi sign. Oh boy. Tattoo. Yeah. On his arm. Uh, right. And now I'm just like, uh, so now I'm just pissed. Like, and I, you're just a Nazi sympathizer. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh wait, no, you're Jewish. That's yeah. Right. Now I want to go to sleep, but now I can't. Now right, I, I'm this not, dude's all in your shit. He's in my seat and he's a fucking Nazi, you know, uh, but I did take a picture of it. You want to see a picture of his, of his hand? Yeah. Cause then I posted it and people were like, that might just be the Cub Scouts or something. Or mm. I'm like, no, I, I think this was a Nazi sign. They're like, no, maybe you played strong safety in high school. <laughs> Strong safety, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, right. yeah, I'm pretty sure he's a white supremacist. Yeah, and then people were like, that's definitely a jail tattoo or something. Or if, uh, Well, you know, sometimes you got to do that to survive in jail. So, yeah, but then why not get it covered up? Get it covered up. There's, well, maybe he plans to go back to jail. <laughs> I mean, how much is it to cover it up? Like, seriously. No, uh, yeah, no, clearly he believes in it. Ugh, so and, you know, that kind of uh, energy is emboldened right now. It, right? It really is. How he used to we, hide it. He would have worn sleeves two or three years ago. That's what my dad said. No, that's exactly right. But now it's out there. Yeah. You know, because we have, you know, what we have. Ugh. So how are you doing? What's going on with you? Okay, a couple of things. Number one, okay, remember I told you about the fight that broke out of my shows in Phoenix and then I yeah. riffed about it for 45 minutes? Yeah. I finally po- posted that video. I finally, like, re-edited it. So, uh, and so, and it, but it's a straight-through video. It's not like I edited the video content. I edited the view so that, you know, the sign of the club wasn't showing. So, But that's right. up now on my YouTube page. You can see this ridiculous thing that happened. Now, you can't see the fight. You can hear it. You can see everybody reacting to it. But nobody, of course, people weren't focused focused on adjusting the camera they were focused on breaking up the fight right so but you see it all you know it all happens and you see me on stage and my reaction and me scrambling around like do i leave do i stay and i'm like i'm staying uh-huh. and then i riff about it for 45 minutes driving the audience wild i'm slamming beers i'm hitting the cymbal everything it's a crazy crazy set so that's now on my youtube just go to youtube greg romero wilson okay so that's up that's exciting now last week uh, I was scheduled to be at the Ha Ha on Thursday. And then remember Josh Wade? Uh, he was having birthday drinks on Friday. I was yeah, supposed I to go Josh to that. Yep. And then uh, and then on Saturday, uh, I was supposed to do uh, the late show, The Down and Dirty, at the Ha Ha Cafe. Right. Two things happened. One, first I got sick Ugh. on Wednesday. And it was one of those ones where I knew, like, I'm fighting it with, the, you know, the emergency and the Zycam and doing everything I can. But, of course, the key is to rest. The key is is fluids and rest and not doing shit. So, first I have to cancel on the ha-ha for Thursday, day of Thursday. I thought I was coming uh, out of it on Thursday, and yeah. actually that was the day that I was actually sick. Okay. So, I would call him, like, I'm sick, I'm sick, and I'm sorry, let me out of Thursday. And Terry's like, fine, okay, Greg. So, I'm out of that okay then friday comes and then summer reminds me you can't do the show on saturday we bought costumes we've had plans to go to our friend's big costume party on saturday for over a month and i'm yeah, like but it's your show though it's your job i i know but i we had made these plans I, over a month ago it's, it's i fucked up <laughs> yeah but this is your I, show I know, though it's your saturday I call, show i know so i had to call her again and be like not only can i not do thursday but i'm not gonna be able to come on saturday as well uh. oh boy doghouse city but it's either be in the doghouse with Terry or be in the doghouse with Summer. So I chose to be in the doghouse. Your with shows, Summer. but your show's late. You couldn't went to the party first, and then like- not really, because the party didn't start till like nine, and the show was at ten thirty. <sighs> so I had to back out of the show, and uh, so yeah, so they were not happy about. It. And then because we were just getting over being sick, we didn't stay very late at the party. We left the party at like eleven thirty. She'll forgive you. I was home and in bed by midnight. So the, all that, so I didn't do, do, so I didn't perform. I didn't go to his thing on Friday. Stayed home from all of that. 
that. I had two things I was supposed to go. I didn't go to any of that. Just stayed home, stayed home, stayed home. And then finally we went out on Saturday for a little while. And on Sunday, went and had a show at the Improv and fucking super crushed it. Dressed, dressed as Mario. <laughs> That's it, because I already have the Mario face. You know, so we though. dressed up. So all those pictures are up on my uh, on my Instagram. But it's a private account. You have to ask to uh, be a part of it because some of you are fucking creepers and uh, and say stupid shit. So it's a curated account now. But if you want to see them, they're on my Instagram. You know what annoys me, though, about this Greg Hall- Halloween? I get it. Halloween's on a Wednesday. But the people have to get dressed up on Friday and yes. Saturday and yes. Sunday. That's the thing. We you're got. The, I'm fucking, wearing it the whole time. I paid 50 bucks for this costume. I'm wearing 40s, it. You're in your 40s, man. Come on. Who cares? Some people love it. Listen, you don't have to do it. But that doesn't I don't mean other do people it. can't. No, fuck, I know, but it's annoying. But how much does your wife wish you did? She doesn't. Oh, she doesn't care. That's doesn't very care. unusual. She doesn't care. And as he wants tomorrow night, she wants to dress up. I'm like, tomorrow night we'll do it. She has me as Prince Charming and the, the, the girl's <laughs> our, our daughter is uh, Snow White or something. That's and adorable. Then, yeah, that, that I'll do. Is she going to be the witch? The, uh, no, I don't know what she's doing. But that's Wednesday night. We're doing it Dude, Halloween. listen, here's the thing, though. The parties were on Saturday night. So you get to wear those costumes Saturday through Wednesday, my man. Uh, That's the way it goes. I don't know. I think See, it's, whereas I, if it, you know what I mean? If it was on Thursday, then all the parties would be on Thursday and no one would get to wear them any weekend. Uh, but it was, I love it. I, I wear that. I, and that's like, don't get me wrong. When I wore it to the improv on Sunday, I was the only person in costume. But that was the fun part about it. I knew no one else was going to be in costume. And then I went up there and fucking rocked that show. Fucking had a blast. And then Craig showed up. Craig Robinson showed up. And uh, he he actually went up and played the Mario Brothers tune on the theme song. on the, do, 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 do. He awesome. knew it from memory. Played it. Like, figured out the notes, like, in his mind, and went up there and played it on the piano and brought me back on stage to, like, jump around and fucking do the whole thing. So, <laughs> it was wild. The audience went wild. So, let's talk. Since our last show, Ben Askren, they made the trade. So wild. Which, Something that, has there ever been an MMA trade? I don't think so, but I like it. I like it for a lot of reasons. Number one, Demetrius Johnson, I think, is awesome, but I, I think that uh, Askren creates a certain excitement. I mean, they should have just got Askren anyway. I mean, that's totally. Just, the fact that they left him out there for someone else to take, that's on I mean, that. why do, and, but I don't know. I, I get why he did it, though. They were offering him a lot less money than he would take and go where the money is. Go I where mean, the money is. Askren doesn't have anything to prove. Go where you're booked. So, by the way, Bubba Jenkins. Bubba Jenkins. Is here. Is hey, look at Bubba Dream. Oh, my God. Jenkins and Dream. What's up, little man? What's going look on? Yeah, boy, look at that. Is what that is dad's going attitude? On? That's for sure. So, hold on. Uh, so, let's uh, grab some Okay, let's get you that microphone. Let's get it. But I think that's what it does. I think you, even though it's a, a tacit approval, I think in many ways it says, hey, you know what? These are legit fight leagues, and they've taken up some really good fighters, and we're willing to make a move to, to demonstrate that. Well, Ben Askren should have been there a long time ago. The guy's sure. a two-time national champion, Olympian wrestler, undefeated, Bellator champion. Uh, you can't say enough about this guy. He's, he's, he's insane. He's so good. The thing is, is that I do... I get a little nervous that maybe they got him a little too late. Maybe he's 34. Maybe he's not the same fighter he was at 29. That's, I, but me, my, that's me, my, my neurosis. But then I think, you know what? Askren has not shown any signs of taking any damage. Right. He's never been hurt in a fight. Right. Uh, he's never been rocked, never been knocked out, never been put to sleep. And he's a guy that doesn't do drugs, doesn't drink, as far as I know. Takes care of himself, always stays in shape. Yeah. So maybe, you know, 34... I think I think he'll be he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Well, and that's the thing. They left this door open. Yeah. They left this door open by not paying their fighters very well and and giving them too much time between fights, not not developing enough guys, making their stars fight too frequently. <laughs> You know, so I, I think they absolutely left the door open for this to happen. And I mean, I think maybe they thought maybe Bellator would go away that it would, you know, but, but and I think maybe now that they're resigned to the fact that none of these guys are going away. PFL's not going away. You know, Ryzen's not going away. Bellator certainly isn't going away. Well, a lot, of, a lot of things. But other people are saying as far as Demetrius Johnson goes, they're trying to get rid of the 125 pounds of vision. They say there's not that much interest. Aren't that there's not too many. It's not too deep. 
They get rid of Demetrius Johnson. He's not really a moneymaker for them. He's right. happy because he's like, listen, I'm a martial artist. I don't engage in Twitter wars. I don't talk shit to people. I'm not this and that. And I don't. And now I'm in an organization that respects that. I think in Japan or Singapore, the fans are more respectful. Uh, they're more into just the, they're more into the actual fighting. Yeah, than the, they're, the they're mouth not into. Play, they're the, not into. The, 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 they don't really care the about talking, that stuff. The trash I mean, talking. they like freak show fights and stuff like that, but it doesn't matter. And maybe. They're so and Demetrius Johnson, Asian people are a little smaller than Americans. Let's so 125 maybe is still is, you know, is a heavyweight for that. <laughs> I mean, look at the average Asian person is probably the, a lot smaller than the average. Uh, no, you're, white, you're right uh, about American. that. No, that's oh, generally they relate to him more. Is that what you're saying? Maybe yeah. maybe 125 <laughs> is like a you know is like a center for the uh, for their <laughs> basketball team. Everyone can be Demetrius Johnson over there. So, yes. I used to do a joke about that about like porn, yeah. like the dick size in porn has gotten out of control. Like, I could never be in porn unless it's Japanese porn. <laughs> oh, you're like Mandingo. I'd be, I'd be God, you know, Godzilla over there. They'd be like, Fucking Ugh, Greg Dingo. Don't, don't. <laughs> so, I'd be highly competitive in the Japanese porn market. So, let's talk about a guy right here because we haven't seen him in a while. That's right. Since my, my, my wedding. Been a minute. Uh, Been a minute. Baba Jenkins looking lean, so, by the way. Yeah, look good. Brother. Look like you're. Am, you, am I? You're looking am, lean. All right, cool. If so, you stay ready. What's going on with you? Yeah, you got I'm the, to get I'm the ready. champ, like you said. That's right. Bell is not going anywhere. Bellator is not going anywhere. All these organizations are not going anywhere. And uh, I just became champ of one of the fastest. Uh, I think it's the only global organization as far as like going to different countries and different continents and just hitting all the places that um, a lot of these other organizations haven't hit. Um, and, and Brave. So that's a company that I'm with. That's the organization that I'm with. Um, I'm face of the 145-pound division. Yeah, and, uh, amen. It, Pray it, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It took a while to get a belt, but we have a belt. And now uh, with that, we garner some validity. You know? So you have a belt. You're in Britain. Now, where was this fight? It was in... It was in Dubai. In Dubai. In Abu, uh, well, Abu Dhabi. Now, yeah, I was watching Dubai. you. I watched the fight. It was a good fight, but he did take you down. Right. How the fuck did that happen? Uh, I was trying to broaden my horizon with uh, some jiu-jitsu prowess that I was working on and I had I had everything locked up that I liked and uh, with the uncomfort of you know just the ring rust and it being in the in early in the round or whatever uh, I just kind of made a mistake <laughs> and I, I immediately laughed I, he got the takedown and he was feeling confident about himself I mean I really even I you really, were like how the fuck is this yeah, guy I, take I really let what I, and it, 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 it immediately <laughs> let me know to stick to what I know you right, know what right, I mean? right, right, right. it was a good thing that happened to me in that at that point in the fight because um, I was working on jujitsu chokes from like the defensive wrestling position, the sprawl out position, right? You know, like a ten finger choke and guillotine chokes, but not pulling my guard or anything like that, but just some different stuff instead of the always smash him out, heavy hit me. And in the fight, I could I went immediately to like the new stuff that I was working on, yeah. Instead of the old me, you always want to play with the new toys. Yeah, you always you do. always want to play with the new toys. But what it did and then was like, what it did was shock me into like, hey, not not that yet, not yet. Right, right, right. We can play with some new toys or some other stuff, but as of right now, there's a belt on the line. Yeah, let's go, let's ahead go with your fundamental wrestling. Exactly. And then we'll get fancy what you are later. super expert, <laughs> right. number one and then we'll at. Get fancy later. So that's yeah. that's where like that's how you took me down, man. Honestly, I'm not gonna be like, oh, well, I slipped. No, I mean I was looking to get a ten finger choke. After I had it. I kind of like, you know, made a mistake and didn't do the right things. And he was a champion and, and formidable opponent. And he took me down and he, he got a good one out of it. Was, was, was Kenny Johnson with you when that happened? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I, um, I, I, I do my own wrestling, so I don't I don't have a, a wrestling coach in my corner because. Right, right, That's right. the one well, thing you have kind of down. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. You want the other thing. He won't transition. No one will coach me in transitioning from wrestling to wrestling. You know? Right. No, right. but he took you down and then he hit you with like a legal knee, right? Yeah, he hit me with a, a legal knee. And I don't know what it was in but he also hit me in, uh, he also hit me with an up kick an up kick yes okay so but then you won every minute of the rest Ew. of that fight you want this one buddy that would there okay. you come yeah we got it okay. yeah, yeah. open that but then Bubba you won every you minute of the rest of that fight right that is our water that's the water you're gonna give me there you go brand new just for you dream Look at your hair. So, but then you won every minute of the rest of the fight. I, I believe so. Uh, I think I dominated the rest of the fight. Uh, he hit me with the illegal knee and then an illegal up kick. Um, he was inside my gloves a lot. Obviously, you know that's the game of you know being being you know dirty dirty ground and pound. So you know grabbing the gloves. But I believe yes, I won every minute of of the rest of that fight. Um, I think you did too. I mean, you won thirty twenty seven on all three, right? It was 
five rounds fight. Sorry. Five rounds. So he, he's Did jipping, it go all five? Uh, he's jipping two of my rounds. Oh, yeah. see, so, I mean, you won what? It was five 50 rounds, to 50 to 45. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50-44, yeah. sir. 50-44. Yeah, I don't think they, uh, I think they took a round away from him. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't even close, uh, which is great. Now, I've been following your Instagram afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're in, like, you're on yachts. Yeah. Uh, you're hanging out with a lot of Arab people. Yeah, you have yeah. little yachty. Yeah, you, yeah, have, yeah. Um, <laughs> you have all kinds of belts everywhere. Yeah, like, what's going on? Bro, I'm just trying to live that champ life you know um so many people get to a point in their life where they they finally achieve their dreams and then like no one ever like pats them on the shoulder for smelling the roses you know i i, I buried this damn seed in the ground and now it's bearing fruit yeah and i'm fucking eating it in front of people and they're like oh <laughs> well you need to be humble well how about you suck my left nut because you don't know where i've come from and how hard i've worked to be totally you know what I mean? no like, you're doing great man the people who know me know where i where i, where I where my no i'm super and, i'm super you know, proud so of you awesome. and i'm also proud of the fact that like you, you're you're wrestling so smart you're fighting so smart man, we you know evolving, bro i can tell you what that i i did feel a little rusty um you know it's been a year since i had fought um i mean literally 363 days wow it was my first five round fight ever so it's a, you know that was playing on my mind a little bit and the, right the rest, how'd your cardio hold up I, I think it i think it held up well i mean i i think my best round was the fifth round oh wow you know, uh, you know I, I very I, few guys could say that yeah you know and i i was a little bit injured and i kind of pushed through it and i was trying to push the pace i think i i i was close to finishing them in the third mm. but i believe my best round mentally for me right. was the fifth round right right I think my heart, my cardio. At that point, you up. were like fully relaxed. Fully the ring relaxed. rust was off. I you felt comfortable with the game in plan. In the fifth round, at no point did I think about my conditioning or holding right. back. Right. Yeah. Know what I mean, after I had made it past the third, it was just like, all right, let's just let's just go get this belt now. Yeah. It's three rounds to none, and I'm up four rounds to none because of the legal stuff. So let's just your last that. fight before that, it was one of the craziest thing. Like. Yeah. You were beating this guy up, and then he caught you in some weird arm bar or something. Yeah, yeah caught me in an arm And bar. then you just got up and just spiked him on his head. And I remember, I think it was Frank Mir was like, he's doing everything wrong. <laughs> 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 He's like, but yeah. but, but it's working. But it's working, and yeah. I showed that to like I think Ashley Evan Smith. I go, what should he have done differently in this situation? She's like, uh, people could like, well, like, well, he got out. That's what they yeah. said. Well, he it worked for him, right? But right. They, but but it was it was that was in so deep. Right. But you weren't tapping. No, I'm not gonna tap on. Like even with this last fight, I, I my my ankle is still swollen from the ankle lock that he had. But I mean, it's late in the fourth, and I got a belt on the line and. You know, dreams. well, you've always had that opinion of you're not tapping. Yeah, you, like you'll you know go that. out. I you know, know that. that straight yeah. up, baby. Yeah. You go out from the old you school days. Totally. I'm out. I, I know that. that. I know that. that. You know that. Yeah, it's written in stone. It's written in stone, baby. It is written, but it, <laughs> it wasn't deep enough either. And with that arm bar, I'm going to the point of where I feel as though it ain't coming back. And both fighters, both fighters that I was fighting, went to their their ten. And my, my pain tolerance happened to be a 12 at the time. And, and, and obviously, I didn't tap. So it was, I got out of both situations. Oh, my God. Uh, I was like, I was watching that like, no, 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 no. And then <laughs> But I was even like, with his last fight, his his MO was to, you know, basically, he gets beat a little bit for the first half of the fight, even the first three rounds. And then in the fourth or late in the fifth, you know, when he's losing, he submits the guy. He's done it literally four out of his last six fights. And uh, he's good at it. So being that he had a deep lock in the fourth, after me already winning in three rounds, me studying him and me understanding who he was. You and, knew he was and going his for MO, those. I, yeah, I, this, was, this was his opportunity. This yeah. was, you know, I don't know if he plays, you know, possum the whole fight or just sees an opportunity to wear it, but this was something that I had seen, I focused on, and I was like, you know what? I, I am not letting this happen. Although it was close, I, I just could not. No, it was it. great. And I heard they're paying really well over there. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's uh, Dubai money. It's not du Dubai. They're from Bahrain, but it's a, it's a royal prince. I mean, the guy's a, a sheik, so. So like, like, so, like, compared to, like, Bellator and other companies, I heard it's a lot more? Well, I, I wouldn't say it's a lot more. Just the difference in opportunity, the difference in uh, why they will pay you for what they will pay you. You know, there's uh, the the Bellators and the stuff like that. I, I, I believe, got your salad. I believe there's a, a limit to, you know, why they're paying, what they're paying. I feel like when you're a royal sheik, I mean, the, the, the bank account's endless over there. So it's a little different. That's great, man. I'm super happy for you, man. And I also been following you on Facebook. A little confused sometimes because you're like, you'll put, you put a post. You're like, hey, Jesus, talk to me. Yeah. 
but you got to tune in at eight. Uh, like, but like, why can't you just tell us then? Like, I, like, well, it depends <laughs> on what I'm actually doing. Um, it, it depends if I'm building an audience for something that I want to tell people. Like, you obviously know that there's a whole <laughs> rhyme and reason behind everything I do. So it's not just. I know, but, but I'm like, if, if someone, if Jesus talked to you, can I just tell me now? Like, can't, uh, you, you, like no, because, I have and, to. Because, and does he speak to you in English? <laughs> No, because I'm pretty sure he was like a Hebrew speaker, maybe. No, he or? definitely he, Jesus speaks to you in the language you understand. That's good. All right, that's if you're good. Spanish, he's not going to speak English to you. Not and try to make he speaks to Greg and Coke. Hey, he speaks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he does that, but he'll bless those. He who speaks look to me in Spanglish. Sure. So I mean, do you have a lot of? He people likes to that, throw in Mexican words here and there. Do a lot of people come to your sermons? Are you getting a good? I mean, I don't, I don't do like sermons and stuff. I, don't, I, I saw you on stage talking yeah. to all these people. Yeah, yeah. Well, that could be just sharing your testimony. Yeah, sometimes uh. I, I share, sometimes I, I share my testimony, and then sometimes the pastor asks me to speak. So sometimes I do preach, but like having like multiple sermons as if I'm going around like <laughs> teaching and preaching. Right, like you're doing like, tent revivals or yeah, something. That's yeah, not yeah. quite there yet. Yeah, no, I'm not. not yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, 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 not just yet. Not, not, you're still a fighter. Yes, right. I, I am a professional <laughs> fighter. Uh, I do know the Lord and I read the Bible, so every now and then uh, the people ask me to speak. But sometimes, yeah. like I can't tune in at eight o'clock. C- can I just message you, like, what did he say? Yeah, well, yeah, but then you're gonna miss the opportunity for someone else to get an opportunity to show you their faith and all that. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got like, it got there's it. a point of like a point in time. It's called appointed times. <laughs> there are certain things that God only does at those appointed times. Like, ah. If you're too impatient. Or you're too rushed. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impatient. You're going to miss that time. You're going to miss yeah, that time. Yeah. So, yeah. 8 o'clock type stuff. <laughs> Is where you want to be, like the pool in Bethesda, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Yes. If it ain't ruffling, don't get in. Exactly. You yeah, had to wait. You had to wait for the stirring look of the waters. You, look at you. Listen, I'm son of a preacher, you man, know brother. About that. You oh, know I know a little something about that. You know that. I know everything. You know that. I know that. You know that. I don't know what's going on right now, but uh, it seems interesting. So, so Bubba, you uh, did you watch the fights last week? By the way, Anthony Smith. There were some. Yes. Okay. Yes. The, you you watched yeah, them. Okay. Yeah, That's I the was. thing about these other leagues now. It was the, UFC. It was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, wait, was it? Was it a, like was Saturday it a, night? But it wasn't a pay per view from was Canada. It? No, it was on FS1. How did I? Because all that stuff's supposed to record automatically, right? And that right. way, you were it home just, too. No, no, I was out at uh, the, the, party, the Halloween yeah, party yeah, that we had yeah. plans for forever for that one. Well, but that stuff's supposed to record automatically. Right. So I come through and I look at my thing. I'm like, well, oh, there was no Bellator or it UFC. It doesn't record because the title of it is the title of the fighters. Right, and so that's what happens it now. It won't record like UFC Fight Night. It'll record like Smith versus Right, that is. happens with the football <laughs> games too. And I'm like, just record Monday Night Football. Yeah. <laughs> Quit calling it Cardinal Saints. <laughs> just fucking record Monday Night Football. Yeah, I'm there. I'm, I know, I'm it's Direct TV. Direct TV, yeah. fucking fix that shit, fix okay? It, fix it. If it's hashtag, fight night, it's fight night. It. If it's Yo, Monday night football, it's MMA Monday roast night it gets things done. So Let's hashtag go. MMA roast it. Do. Hashtag fix it. Fix direct it. TV. Fix it. Direct By the way, TV. I gotta talk to you about it. some of the guys. Yes. R- the wrestling over the weekend, right? The world championships. Yes. Dave Taylor. Yeah, one world champion. Guy went. He went thirty. This guy, he went. He outscored his bonus thirty-seven to nothing. In in the world stage, I think wow! Dake did that? And what was that? I think Dake did that. Oh, that was Kyle Dake. Kyle but Dake, D- Dave Taylor won too, right? Yeah, well, Taylor won. Oh, the other Dake guy. Points, but, ta- Dake but Bubba didn't, beat these guys. Dake didn't. Get he beat all these it. guys. Uh, I mean, you beat Jordan Burroughs. I you, didn't wrestle Dake. We had a match wrestle, uh, set up in Madison Square Garden. That's where I wrestled uh, the Olympian Frank Romero. But. I wrestled all these now do you no no I'm not putting you down because right. I think you're doing awesome yes. and everyone has their own journey. Yes, absolutely. But do you sometimes look at that and go, I fucking beat that guy? No, not at all. Because uh, I could be wrestling in the worlds and doing stuff like that. I mean, everyone knows that these are these are not only like my peers and people that I battled with, but these are like guys that I was beating on a regular basis. So it wasn't. It's not too far fetched to say, oh, Bubba Jig's a world champion, Olympic champion. Of course, we've I've done it in a different sport, um, but. I do understand my path was different. You know, even in that sport, my path would have been different. Even in this sport, my path is different. People who truly know me know there's not much difference between me and some of the guys who are garnered high in the UFC uh, no, rankings. No, 1,000%. So just the paths were different, and you know, the belts that I hold are different, and, and the way that I, you know, the way the way that I sit here is just different than most people. So I, I I'm never going to question God as we've been talking about. I'm I'm cool with where I'm at. I'm like that. That, wait, wait, that being said, I'm truly okay. blessed. Um, you've uh, obviously now you're in a different place. Now you're yeah. more advanced as a fighter. You yeah. went out there and fought a different way. Yeah. Do you feel the Bellator opportunity came around too soon? 
Or are you just like, that's the journey, that's the way it was? No, I think the Bellator um, thing came around exactly at the time that I knew to. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the the main stage of like what they wanted to do with me maybe came too soon because I never took amateurs. I went straight right. pro fighting. Right. I didn't go straight to Bellator, but I went straight, straight pro to pro fighting. fighting. Right. So when I was in Bellator, I was kind of learning how to become a fighter, you know, not just a wrestler. Right. Who could be a fighter. Fighter, so that was the difference. I think this is actually on now. I know, you're oh right. no, no it's, it's on the whole time. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, it's on the whole time. Yeah, so I think it, I think it came at the right time, and I, you know, everything happens for a reason. I, all those things put me at this moment where sure, I'm a world champion. Oh, what, what, what belt is that? No, fuck you, I'm a world champion. Yeah. Now, yeah. when you took the picture of you on the mountaintop with the belt, did yeah. you know your wiener was so clear? <laughs> no, I ah. see. See, now the thing about that, like, is, I mean, it was like, a real clear wiener shot. No, I see. What I was focused on. On was the belt itself? Yeah, and the the view in the background. It now, was a gorgeous view. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. a beautiful photo. What, like, what his I wiener did, or the, the the landscaping? Oh, no, all no. of it apparently. Oh no, it was. I, a, you could see veins. <laughs> I mean, it was a, and listen, you got a lovely penis. You got a lovely wiener. <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's. Yeah, did any so women point it out or just him? <laughs> he pointed it out, but after he pointed it out, it, went it crazy. became, it became yeah. a topic. I was like, because I'm looking, I'm like, how is nobody mentioning the wiener? Like it's a clear. It had 300 likes before. Before he had even said anything, and then and someone all of a sudden, said anything, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, oh, the dick in your pick is, yeah, like, oh, I'm like, oh, that's hilarious. Strong well, penis I, game. Well, that was probably the wrong picture to choose now. After now, after noticing it, but the it's picture itself was hours. great. And listen, if I could fit into tight pants like that and look like you do in those, <laughs> I'd fucking wear them every day. You wouldn't get me out of it. If there were an emergency, they would have to cut them off my body. Okay, but I can't. So I'm proud of you for doing it. I know. That was but for I you. Could, that but was I for couldn't you. honestly believe it. I was like. No, all these likes. No one's mentioned the wiener. Like it's a clear wiener shot. Yeah, yeah. I know, but you're also yeah. the guy that has like there's a baby. You're like that kid has a big dick in pictures. That's you're true. Like, I do have a big dick baby joke. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this kid had a big. You're always looking for the opportunity. Listen, it is what it is. I can't help it. I notice these things. You know. Hard not to. That's no, but I know what you say, Bubba, because like I'm sure and Greg as well. You know, there were guys that like we do comedy with that we that started out way after us. Yeah. And uh, now we're like have TV shows or this sure. or blah blah blah. And guys that we blow off the stage, but they're made, but they're in different tax brackets than us. Yeah. And it's hard not to be like, what the fuck am I doing wrong or why am I not there and there? But you're right. It's it's all. Like I said, God's plan, and, yeah. and and you'll get there when you'll get there. You're and, you there know. when you're supposed to be there because I'm I might not had I won like say the first Georgie fight and it would have put me in a title contention or even the second Georgie fight. I don't know if my family would have been the same. I don't know if the money that I would have gained from that fight would have put me to being the humble man that I you know am to my family at times. You know there yeah. are, there are times where the focus of becoming a fighter come it's being drawn away from the focus of being a husband and a, and a father. So winning a uh, great championship sometimes pulls you away from your family if you don't have that base that you need growing through the struggle with winning those championships with your family and that's what I think happened the the ups and downs the struggles the goods the positive it helped my family win and lose with me so when I won the belt it didn't really pull me away from them it wasn't like I won the belt and I'm gonna go on a yacht with a bunch of strippers and I'm, I'm on the yacht with the wifey I'm back at the crib with the kids and we you now know, you have three kids now or two three kids three ah, kids two boys one girl no I one. watch some of your videos yeah. and I get worried that child services are gonna be called why would they do because that? you you wrestle with your son yes and you throw him yes. it, like my wife watched it you ever yes. see like a a lion tiger mm -hmm. like a, like a with right, his, with his cub. cubs and yeah. they're training them they're, yeah. they're like picking them up and throwing and your kids are loving it yeah. but but at the same time like even Alan says, who trains with you, he's like, <laughs> Alan says that your kid is going to be a state champion like right. next year or oh, something. Oh, listen, the way he walked in the, the room yeah. today, yeah. Dream walks in like, I'll kill all you motherfuckers. <laughs> like, I mean, he knows he's the baddest <laughs> little man in the room. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no. Like you got, I mean, it was it's, dripping off it when he walked in. Dripping. Totally. It's, it's you got this off. kid trained out. <laughs> but like, you never worry that maybe like, because like, I, he's going to beat your ass one day. Like, you know that right because like i know you <laughs> and I, so I know proud. you and like greg oh, knows yeah, you but like yeah, if someone yeah. has doesn't know you and sees you just yeah. throwing the kid around the room like yeah, that well, do what you want um, uh, 
As far as as far as I always, you know me, uh, man, Adam. You've always tell me you, you send me messages on on some of my social media posts and hey, what if they do this? What I don't, I don't, I honestly don't think like uh, I, I don't fear the things that the world fears. You know what I mean? Like when when I talk about my trust in the Bible, like I read the Bible and I talk about the God of the Bible, of the God of the stories that you guys hear about. You know what I mean? So I trust in that God of the Bible. So when it comes to like you know child protective <laughs> fuck child pr- protective services you know what i mean like i i know who my god is you but you're throwing I mean? kid out the window and stuff i mean yeah. i like i yeah. like he's throwing well. like into, into traffic <laughs> like this traffic going on he's like all right time today like, <laughs> like yeah, you can dodge a car you can dodge a double <laughs> age <laughs> he's throwing wrenches at the kid if you can jump over the semi no one will be able to touch you i, can I love you right it you're now. not raising a kid you're building a superhero a monster hero. that's right he's a gonna machine. be a superhero you ever see kick ass like, yes that's what, what i'm saying that's it's what he's doing so all three of them, all three of them, That's and good. my daughter's the meanest. I can tell you right now. But honestly, man, it really <laughs> is me just, you know, being influ- influenced in my children's lives. But I'm also competing at a higher level. I know what's out there against them, and if I make my son what I was, he'll be good. He'll be as good as I was. But um, if I make my son what I was, then we didn't advance in in, in culture. We didn't advance right as a in, family. We didn't advance as a family. We just made Bubba point two. With the same attributes, I want my son to be better than I was. So I, I you know, I, I handle him. But how is he at school? Is he beating up the entire school? No, absolutely. Actually, <laughs> he's actually one of the good kids in the class. That he's one of the teacher helpers. That's what you want because yeah. it's, nobody fucks with Dream. Right. <laughs> of course, so, of course. So the the kids be getting out of line, and Dream's like, hey. The teacher said, "Do this," and the kids are like, "All right." He's the, ba- he's the bouncer. Listen, he is, listen, he walked the, in like he's the, the bouncer. teacher's pet, but also the bully somehow. Yeah. <laughs> so. Like I was afraid of him. The kid walked in. I'm like, "Listen, he's in charge. He's robbing <laughs> the teacher. The teacher gives him his money." Like, uh. <laughs> right? But it's like, no, he's give me your a, lunch money he's and a your really cigarettes. Warm-hearted no, kid, no and even the teachers are like, some, he, he has a sensitivity that other kids don't have. Like he's different because he's like, he's really in tune with like knowing how to care for other people right. and showing love. It's and, the white side. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just he's, kidding. He's, he's a quarter white, right? Yeah, he's 25 percent white. Now, 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 you're a black house now. Now you've been that. Yeah. This is your 12th gym, right? Yeah, but, but this is the, but 34th. this, but this is the one, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it can't be the one for now. Uh, I don't understand. You know, they're the professional football players and NBAs, and so many teams they change. They change. Of course. Left well, and, right. and they're making trades, they, so yeah, I mean, he could get traded. They, no, but he needs a. Spe- no, but this, but probably, but, you're, but even, you're also a. Even with difference in organizations and fighting and and football and and all the difference in sports mma is individual you have to do what works for not only you but for your family so for a certain time the gym and the people that you're working with and the coaches that you have are to build you for that certain time and when you've out grown them or when they've outgrown you everyone has to go into the space that they're needed just like a a, a snail in at the bottom of the ocean or something they you outgrow your shell and then you move to the next shell it's scary at times and you're out there without a shell but then when you get to the next one you get comforted you're next you're next you're right back to what you were doing and you're back to being the fucking shell snail again but is it hard for you also because you're wrestling that you always kind of walk into a gym where you could dominate everyone in the gym and wrestling so therefore it's like i don't i don't look at it from that perspective i don't look in the gym I don't go through MMA gyms looking how well I can get my wrestling I honestly go through every gym looking how well I can transition from being a wrestler to being a striker right uh, and to knowing the jiu-jitsu loopholes I'm not really trying to be a jiu-jitsu artist everyone knows that's a little different for me because when I walk into a gym I'm wondering will they let me use the restroom (laughs) so I can there's a whole different mindset he's walking the curves first I'm I'm walking in wondering if I'm gonna shit on people you're wondering if they're if they're gonna let you shit (laughs) (laughs) I just need to use the restroom Uh, okay I got a long way to drive and uh, I just want to use the restroom I'm a little lost take it easy you're on third street <laughs> but no nah, i'm telling you it's a it's a different mindset when you go to different gyms and you're trying to focus on what's right for you because you can play the politic game you can play the loyalty game you can play all this other shit and then realize you're five years into the game being loyal to people who have never helped you become a champion or you can turn around and say i choose you to be my coach because you, i get something out of you 
I'm I'm always loyal to the people who are loyal to me. So if they get something out of me, I get something. I give them back what they what they deserve, their percentages or whatever they've asked for 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 the camp. I I slight no one on their camp for for the years that I've been a fighter. No one can ever say, oh, Bubba didn't pay it. I mean, within days of me winning or losing, their check was in the mail in a sense. So. When it comes to picking people for your camp, like you said, I don't pick a wrestling coach for my camp. That's I'm not gonna pay a man to tell me how to wrestle. Never will. Never. You know, yeah, you I don't have to. That should, never have. have. <laughs> I've been I've been getting coached for free because wrestling's that kind of way. But right, I, I you know so there are certain paralysis that I you know you just don't you don't break as a as a fighter. But and you're still at Black House. Still at Black House. Still loving Black and, House. And who are, who are some of the guys you train with over there? Uh, Shaman. I, I, man, Shaman's got a fight coming up. Uh, he's one of my main training partners because we're the same weight and you know he's a really good. Who's trainer. that? Shaman uh, Marais. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, man, who else do I train with? How's your Obviously. boxing? My boxing is great, man. My boxing yeah, is really, really come along? Yeah, yeah, bro. I'm, s- I'm super pumped about where my boxing is to the point where I I feel as though I can stand up with anyone. But we're not nice. laughing. Good thing is we're it. not laughing anymore when we knock people yeah. down. Yeah. Remember, no, remember that I, time yes. you were going through a phase where you'd knock someone down and then laughed at yeah. them? Yep, yep. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm actually expecting to, to, <laughs> to, to knock people down now. And it's becoming uh, very fluent. Uh, I'm involved. I'm a butterfly, baby. I so, so it's you. Uh, I was I crawling it. for a while. It's you. It's Alan. Flying, That's right. You're Alan, the chrysalis. Um, Alan Javon's over there, right? Kona. I've tra- I trained with Kona. Uh, Juan Gomez. He's he's my striking coach, so he's always with me with the with the striking. Um, man, there's just so many faces and so many different people that come in the gym that like you get your work. Is Cyborg there? Sometimes, yeah. Cyborg comes in. Um, Esparza comes in there every now and then. Hey, um, you just yeah. see some random faces, man. I, I I had my boy OSP coming in, man. Hey. And just sometimes, you know, California is one of those melting spot melting spot places, and Black House is one of the places that, like, when you're in California for MMA, you want to stop by and at least see what the legend. And you open up your own about. wrestling academy, right? I have, but I put it onto an online academy because of the world championship that I won and. Um, um, everything that's been going on with that, I've been traveling so much. I got so many things to do. As their champion, they fight in other countries. But I, like, so I, I coach middle school kids. If I want to see some of your stuff, how do I do it? I'm going to get a website. Um, I actually not get a website. I have a website being built as we speak. I do have the Instagram. Because I would love that. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have subscriptions and all that. Like right now, we are in that building phase of like, yo, Bubba J, what are you going on? I've been working on so much. I, I actually have the Bubba J shoes coming out. And no way, you have your own yes, wrestling shoes? Yes, I, I'm finally, finally making it. What happen. is it? Is it like a sriracha? No, or? It's, it's you don't understand what he no, did. Sriracha. You know what he's doing? College, in college, Classics. college. He won the national championship, yeah. right? Took off his ankle bracelets, threw them in the air, and then. Gunned like him shot down. him, gunned him down. <laughs> I was no, I was really known for not only my celebrations, but for like the way I did my shoes. Sometimes I'd have custom shoes painted on, draw. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. everyone always was, uh, and after the nationals, so I was much. telling everybody, I was telling everybody, I was going to get Bubba J shoes, the Bubba J wrestling shoes. Yeah. And it has been a long time coming. Yeah. It's been almost you know what eight years since I won nationals and since I actually said, yo, I'm gonna get a shoe, I'm gonna get a shoe. But yo, they they they're coming. Nice. Now, they're how much are these gonna be? I think like Kanye, where they're like nine hundred dollars. Are they? I, I don't know yet because uh, I'm thinking about doing a couple of different things with them. Uh, yeah. There's a couple of different projects that I'm working on where it's like three hundred and three hundred, where every three hundred days I drop a pair of shoes, and like I'm doing, you know, I might be doing some other things that come along with it. Because my kids would love to wear Bubba J shoes. Man, they're they're. They are coming, sir. Nice. nice. I coming. like it. But I, I'm excited about everything, man. Like, we finally got the validity that we needed. Um, after winning the belt, we are no longer contended, contender. We're now champion. And with that, we can say, come get it. Now, people have to fight me. People can't run. You Who's know? your next fight you're going to be against? I think it's in the Philippines in January. We haven't picked an opponent yet. I know they have. Uh, the organization has a couple of people that they want us to fight. So... Uh, well, you've never lost a fight with a full training camp. Never lost a fight with a full training camp. Here's right. the thing, though. Adam and I, we've traveled internationally. We've been around the world. But and the time difference, the lag, it's, it's, it's trouble, man. It's yeah, a real it's thing. No joke. So how <laughs> early do you get out there to adjust? Um, I got out there last time seven days because it was Abu Dhabi, and it was right. literally 11 hours ahead of us. Yeah, it's like so it, we're on yeah. Thursday night morning, is day and day is night. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no absolutely. China's night. the same way. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to get your day and night right yeah, when you travel so the other different. side of the world is fucking hard. Yeah, uh, it is hard. And then it, it being there for the week early, plus I was I was preparing by going to sleep late and, you know, doing stuff right. like that. So right, right. I was slowly but surely trying to work your clock around just, just, yeah, to that. It, it just where it's not affecting me to where the point where it's like, 
in broad daylight, I'm falling asleep. Totally, which is up. what it so, initially is. Initially, <laughs> yeah. you're up all so, night, yeah, like, yeah. oh, my God. And then yeah. you're during but the day, you're like, like, shouldn't we be asleep right now? Right. And that's <laughs> what I'm wondering right. about, like, how early you got to get there to where. There so you got there early. seven days early. Yeah. Do, do you feel you were fully adjusted by fight? Okay, you were I fully was. adjusted because by fight time. Because of what I was preparing for. Yeah, so and, incrementally and like getting said, ready for the it. The Lord um, was already preparing me for what I was going over there. Me being the Christian that I am, the Christian that I am, and the follower of Christ being over there in the Muslim-like world. It's yeah. not just being over there like, oh, this is, I can just say the name of Jesus and be all hunky dory. Like, they, they'll, they'll uh, induct Sharia law on you and kill you on yeah. that type of stuff. So it wasn't just like. So you can't think, after, you, after your fight, you can't thank Jesus? Well, you can, but it's risky. It's very risky. I thank God um, and the right. Lord knows, you know, my, my heart and everything in that. So there was a whole, you know, preparation. And Well, there is do not it. tempt the Lord your God. So yeah, yeah. last thing you want to do is put yourself in that situation. Be like, I yeah. thought you were going to save me. And he's yeah. like, I specifically told you not to do that shit. Yeah, exactly. What and, you know, me. people forget that all the time. They love to test God and be like, no, no, no. God will save me. It's like, yeah. I told you specifically not to put yourself in these situations. Right. Wow. And they say, hey, man, bro, bullet. You got a bucket list, bro. We got a fucking bucket list. Next week, bro, you and I, we're going to fucking jump out of plane. And I'm like, no, the fuck we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not I got three kids. That. I'm not jumping out of plane. I'm planes. not doing that. What, yeah. bro? Well, not only for just for the fact that that's some white people shit, but, <laughs> but for the other fact that like I don't, I'm not gonna test my God in that sense. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I know that there's, there's, a, there's it says a it right there. And people like, love they th- they think they have to prove their faith. No, I'm but what they're doing Muslims is God, testing yeah. God. And God, God says right you, there, do not test the Lord your you, God. If he sends you, then go. Then but go. If, if he don't send you back. <laughs> There's so many stories in the Bible where they're... Where they're Render where the to battlefield Caesar. Cha- where the battlefield changed. They thought one thing was one way, and then things changed. People got you know different, and then it changed, and they were like, God, you're going to save me. And God was like, I told you when the battlefield changes, you got to check back in with me. Yeah. And that was what I was doing leading up to the fight right. in Muslim country was checking in with God, making sure that... It Everything I had because I was taking my wife there. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that it was a, uh, you know, my wife is, you know, not the, not the wear uh, a sheet over her head type. You know, yeah. The, the the what is it? But, well, in uh, Dubai, you don't have to. Yeah, there, but there was no unknowing to her. That was something that I knew going there five years ago. But Abu Dhabi is much more strict. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know what Providence would be, would be in, and she obviously checked in on all that stuff. So. It was just it was just something else to think about while we prepared for a world title shot that I haven't fought for in years. Of course. Now Ben Askren used to be your coach, right? Yes, sir. Now how uh, do you think he's gonna do in uh he is your ASU coach in the yeah. UFC? Yeah, I think he's gonna kill in the UFC, bro. I think he's gonna do what he does. Like that's Ben Askren we're talking about. Uh, he is uh, the best grappler in MMA. Did you wrestle with him? Like go yeah. live? Yeah. Uh, and how do, how do you do against him it when you go live? It, it, didn't go well. One, uh, he's, he's he's bigger than I. Yeah, yeah. he's bigger. Yeah. Uh, two, it felt like with the knowledge of wrestling that he has at the time that I was in college, it felt like a coach teaching a college wrestler, as it should have. You know what I mean? Like I was, he's a four-time finalist. I'm trying to get a championship under my belt at that time. I was a fifth-year senior, mature in my ways, but I still uh, I still rendered to the knowledge that he had. You know, even now. Uh, be, aren't you the you're the best wrestler in MMA? I, I, I might be one of the most violent, and and I have a different style of wrestling than other people. Uh, I'm I'm robbery style. I will take you down and try to beat the brakes off you. Different than 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 um than Askren will. Askren will absolutely uh, control your liberty. He will he will submit you in in freedom and in mind. <laughs> so right. The, and some of his things are more suffocating and more uh, depressing than others because with minds you feel like man if you do a couple things right you know you might not take those big punches with him it feels as though you're always in the web. Now you know? um there was a story that uh, he told us. On the show where he was coaching against Colby Covington mm-hmm. in college, and Colby started mouthing off to him as the coach. He wanted to fight the coach. Yeah. Uh, were you there when that happened? Um, I don't know if I was there. Was this at when he was coaching? At yeah, they, State? right. Exactly. Uh, I can I can see Colby doing that um, for sure. But no, I, I I probably wasn't around when Colby was wrestling. I I was probably somewhere in the back or already had wrestled because at that point if Colby's wrestling my weight class would have went really recent to were you surprised Colby. with how I remember you and Colby were engaging in like a war of words on Instagram when you yeah. were coaching RDA yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you surprised how that fight went down no I'm not surprised at all um, even though on on social media I was saying oh, we're gonna beat the hell out of you um, I didn't I wasn't in RDA's camp uh, for personal reasons me and RDA we, we went our separate ways I wasn't in RDA's camp for basically the last six 
six, seven weeks of his camp. So, um, most camps are. <laughs> that's the <all> camp. that's <laughs> <a> main part. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. important part. And, camp. and early in the camp, that's the camp. We, yeah, early yeah. in the camp, we just went our separate ways, and you know, we we split as friends. But I knew that my um, I didn't know that my wrestling was not going to help. But I knew that he wasn't working on some of the things that I know we needed to implement before the time came, just even to make Kobe work. Well, weren't harder. you emulating what? Kobe would have done. Oh, absolutely. And then you grinding the fuck out of him for five rounds. Yeah, and that's but there exactly are things what that in that fight I saw that that he does that just a whisper of my voice would have made him do over and over that he was simply not doing. There were things that I could see that me me not being there actually absolutely hurt Hoffa. And I don't want to be, oh, and me not, no. But seriously, right. I, I can see who Hoffa was when I'm there as a wrestler. And then the way he got dominated by Kobe wasn't just because Kobe's wrestling is so hot, much higher than Hoffa's. It was because it, it was a lack of pre preparation in his wrestling leading up into the fight. Now, how do you think Askren does against Kobe? <laughs> Askren beats the absolute breaks off of Kobe. Really, I I, I can beat Kobe in wrestling, but, but as far I know, but as far as MMA, I, I I I feel like I would be a better fight for Kobe in MMA than than Askren will. Not because of the punching aspect. Kobe's not a knockout artist, is he? No, he's not going to knock Askren out because no one has, have they? Get what I'm saying? So as far as like being dangerous enough to knock him out, it's going to be a, a war. But as far as grappling, controlling, and getting submitted. Colby can't stay away from what Askren has for him. It's, it would be a wrestling match, won't it? I mean, yeah. there's two wrestlers who learned MMA, but at the grand scheme of things, it will be a wrestling match. And if we're looking at the wrestling match that that will be, yes, everyone's saying, oh, he can punch, but Colby's not a puncher. Oh, he can. What is Colby really going to do to him? He's going to surround him and try to wrestle him and, 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 and impose his will. With that being done, that's Askren's game plan. Like the moment you go into that web, you are. In oh, Askren's been hilarious. Have you been following Askren him on? Like, is hilarious. Not like been Twitter? hilarious. Askren is hilarious. Of you course, know, he's, a funny, it, he's been a funny guy since the day I know him. But his uh, his his lately his his Twitter feed has just been like. Now, have you been following well, him on Twitter? He's the man now, so he's got he's got yeah. I've, I mean, I've, he's my boy, so I follow him on Twitter. I follow him on you know. I talk. We we I mean Askren's the guy, so he's he's gonna do what Askren's gonna you know what what Funky Ben is gonna. Do do so i guess so against um so against dylan dennis he said uh dylan dennis is something to him he goes my personal favorite stupid thing you said was when your average high school wrestling background would prepare connor for team khabib great job that worked out well <laughs> that's one um but my favorite one that he said was uh i mean he he just kind of went nuts for first of all he 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 said uh he said that Dana White blocked him on Twitter. He's he like, did. "Hey, boss, time to unblock me." Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that was that was really really funny. But do they have an opponent for Aspen yet? No, no, I don't think yeah. so. Uh, I don't. I thought I, somewhere I saw that he was fighting Till, but I. Ooh, I, that's a bad fight for Till, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, because you have to knock him out, or you get submitted. Yeah, but the, the, my favorite one was one in Mike Perry. Uh, so Mike Perry said something. Uh, listen, Greg. Where's Greg? All right, so um, so he goes first. He says to, uh, to uh, Khabib, "I'll I'll meet you at 165, determine the yes. best MMA grappler on the planet." You I name the time and I location. I even commented on that one. I said 100 percent facts. You, you think he I, beats Khabib? I comment. I commented on that one, and yeah. Khabib has no chance against Askren in that in the wrestling grappler department. And people are gonna talk to me, talk like I'm crazy. Like you guys just don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> I've rolled with this man, and I know. But if you roll with Khabib, no, I don't need to roll with Khabib. I've seen Khabib. Really? Yeah. I've well, seen Khabib. I've seen Khabib fail on wrestling opportunities. I've seen Khabib. Like, how do you think, Adam, how do you think I would do with Khabib? In wrestling? In wrestling. You'd be Khabib. But, well, we were talking about Greco wrestling or freestyle? Or how, just, how would I do with Khabib in wrestling? In style, pounds, collegiate? It doesn't matter. In wrestling, in general. You we would, win. We would have a good match. We would, even if I didn't win, right? We'd It'd be, be good, yeah, of course. We'd be close. Yeah. Me and Askren aren't close. But you said he's a lot bigger than you, though, right? But he's yeah. 30 pounds bigger than you. Right. Khabib's he's also bigger than Khabib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what are you point. talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's big. I'm the same size as Khabib. I fight at 45, but I'm damn near the same size as Khabib. Even though Khabib is a big 55-pounder. Askren and Khabib, let's say Askren and Khabib are, are very close. The match isn't close, fellas. My like favorite this. thing that I uh, saw... So, uh, so 
Platinum Mike Perry goes. I was waiting to. Uh, I, Mike Perry. I was waiting to. Be, I like me some platinum. I was waiting to be. That's good. I like. I, like I was waiting Perry. to be That's cowboy first, but I threw my name out there on Insta and see him saying nobody's saying anything. Let it be known. Ben Askren gonna need some aspirin if I get my name on the contract with him. That wrestling shit don't scare me, bitch. So then Askren responds, "Well, I appreciate you being the only one with the courage, Mike. But let's be real, you suck. <laughs> 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 you know you aren't getting the shot." <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, great, man. That's hey, cold blooded. Uh, he he gonna hit him with facts. Askren is is straight to the facts. All right, buddy. Good uh, roll. Good, good to see you, man. It's Absolutely. great to see. You. I wish I could hang out yes. longer. Oh, that's so I love you guys so much, Adam. Oh, uh, and then and then Alan, take care. Alan, and then Alan Juban. Hey, I give you another one. Uh, and then Alan Juban says, "You're an educated guy, so you're smart enough to know that your style isn't striking fear in the hearts of anyone. Sure, you're gonna get hit uh, and get some takedowns." But you're not gonna get touched up like never before. Only a matter of time. And then Askren wrote, "Alan, being humbled in front of millions isn't something fake, fake tough guys like happening to them. You're one and two in your last three. Go back to modeling." Mm. I was like, "Ooh, Alan's my friend. So yeah, is Ben." But yeah, no comment. Cause but that's a rough matchup for Alan though, because of the wrestling. I mean, everyone's a rough matchup. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, no comment there, because those are definitely. I'm on. You know, this dude helped me win a national championship. So, yeah, of course, of yeah, course. I mean, he, he, there was moves that I learned that you know came through for me at nationals. You know what I mean? From asking the mindset, you know, the the willing to not conform, the the whole open style of you know wanting to attack from any angle really is a mind is a mind is a funky mindset. It's a it's an asking type of thing, and gotta have that. How happy was he for you after you won? Did you guys hug and celebrate the back, and was yeah, he- asking. Well, asking it's never too high, never too low. You know what I mean? If you really know asking, he's he's like not gonna be the head over heels jovial. He's always he's always very happy in a sense, and and, and showing joy. You know, usually somewhere with no shoes on, just kind of you know. <laughs> Kind of hippy happy, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, by the way, we're, so we're trying to reach Bob Sapp, uh, yeah, but, but but Bob Sapp, uh, his Skype isn't working. Uh, let's talk about. But by the way, your 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 boy had a tough go last week. Yeah, which one? Uh, I had a couple of friends had a couple goals last week. Um, the guy, uh, the guy who got head kicked. Yeah, T. Javon Edwards. What I mean, uh, I think I still think he's great. He's gonna yeah. be great, he's talented gonna be, as hell. No, he's gonna be good, and he took the loss well, man. I actually was on his Instagram and seeing how he was gonna take the loss because he's knocked everyone out in the first round over his last eight fights. I think he's got like eight consecutive first round like <laughs> one hundred quitters. So to have that is you know it, to take a loss, especially from 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 knockout in devastating fashion probably would put me personally like in a in a bad spot you know just like oh my gosh i you know i took something devastating but as i was reading his instagram he he definitely shook it off well he took it well and you know he's he's gonna be back man it's it's all we're up with, with us virginia boys now do you think he overlooked that guy no um i i i do think that he he does it I th- i do think that he you know he now realizes that he's not in the arena league anymore you know um, that are, you know, when you're fighting in your state doing the local things to get put on the UFC stage, you think when, when with the winning and the success that you get, that when you get that UFC opportunity, everything's the same. But as they say, and in, in, in from college to NFL, things are different. Things speed up. People are faster. That's the same in MMA. It's not that things speed up. It's just that things are a little bit harder and the intensity is a little bit high. And obviously, the risk is much higher. You know, the fall from UFC in your career of MMA is much more <laughs> devastating <laughs> yeah, yeah. than any fall from any other organization. What's up? Listen, people. 66% of men lose their hair by the age of 35. I started losing it when I was 21. It wasn't good. No bueno. And the thing is, when you start to notice your hair loss, it's too late. It's easier to keep the hair you have than to replace the hair you've lost. Is that hairline slowly starting to move backwards? Any bald spots yet? Well, how do you feel a year from now when it's business as usual, right? You're going to feel great because you don't want to lose your hair. I mean, at least have the option, okay, if you want to shave it off. But you don't want to lose it. Well, listen, I ask you, do you want to be a bald spot? Just, do you want to have a bald spot just pop up? Or do you want to do something about it first? Be proactive. Take the offense. Don't just play defense. Do you want to do something about your hair's line, huh? Well, let's check it out. I don't know why guys turn to weird solutions or do nothing when they can turn to medicine and science. Go to 4 It's a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Thanks to science, 
and baldness can be optional. Yes, they give well-known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. Why are you going to gas stations to get hair supplies? Anyway, huh? Get gas at gas stations. It's so easy. You answer a few quick questions, and a doctor will review and prescribe stuff for you, all right? The products are shipped directly to your door. Well, go now. My listeners can get a trial month of Hims for just $5 today. Right now, while supplies last. See the website for full details. That would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or the pharmacy. Go to 4 slash roasted. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash roasted. 4 slash roasted. Listen, you want to make more money? More money is good. Everyone's happy when they have more money. And Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos, all commission-free. They strive to make financial services work for everyone, not just the wealthy. It's a non-intimidating way for the stock market newcomers to invest for the first time with true confidence. Okay, you want to be confident? Well, check these people out. Check out Robinhood, all right? They have uh, no commission fees. And other brokerages, they charge up to $10 for every trade. But Robinhood doesn't charge commission fees, okay? They don't keep all your money. It's easy to use. Their website is very, very easy to use. And their web platform also lets you view stock collections. The 100 most popular sectors like entertainment and social media and curated categories like female CEOs and analyst ratings of buy, hold, sell for every single stock. You learn by doing. Learn how to invest as you build your portfolio. You can discover new stocks and track favorite companies with personalized news feeds. Listen. Robinhood is giving listeners, my dog's even excited about it. They're giving listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. Sign, <laughs> sign up at mmaroasted.robinhood.com. My dog is so excited about this. Okay, he wants more money. He wants more dog food. That's mmaroasted.robinhood.com. Check them out now. No, I was like, uh, I mean, he was like a six to one favorite, but that other guy was no joke. And I'm like, yeah. uh oh. Both yeah, debuts, both multi guy, you know. Yeah. Uh, T's a stand up guy. Uh, well, he's a wrestler with with, with stand up ability. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't get to see the fight. I was uh, out in meetings, but you know, his cornerman was one of his best friends. Is also his cornerman who um you know was giving me play by play, and he was letting me know that you know some things were a little bit off, and you know I, I was hoping to have been there, but I, I you know. Scheduling plans. He'll be back. He'll be back. So this week, this Saturday night, Daniel Cormier versus Derek Lewis. Uh, Cormier is my buddy. I obviously want DC to win, although I kind of want Derek Lewis to have the post-fight press conference because <laughs> that would be really funny if he's the champ. Um, and uh, Derek Lewis is funny. Like, you know, it's funny. Like, like Tyron Woodley was telling me that you know he felt like the UFC didn't promote him he, in like the barber shops. Like, he could have been like the barber shop champ like he was I, I think what he was trying to mean like you know like uh, maybe the hood kind of thing and mm. I feel like uh, he, he was sort of upset about that and I kind of understood what he was talking about but Derek Lewis kind of has that because I know a lot of people that like don't right. follow the UFC uh, a lot of my, my comedian friends who are like my, my black a lot of my black comedian friends who actually like one of them is a barber actually he's like who's that Derek Lewis guy he's like man, man that dude's funny as fuck like right. but like he's he definitely like resonates uh, yeah, I think um, one it's it's in community Missouri the, the, the Mizzou they have a, a, a big community but as far as like uh, on the grand s scale of things I think Houston reps a little bit more of that hood style of things you know, you don't really think of St. Louis, Missouri, as, the, you know, where Woodley is from, as that type of place. It is. It is. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> like, the loot that down in that area, that, I mean, it's a hard place. But when you think of uh, the grand scheme of things as far as numbers and, you know, people who move the needle, Houston gets to jump in. And, when, when, and you got to think about weight class. This dude's a heavyweight and a big weight class saying, saying things that are tweetable. You know, my yeah, balls yeah. are hot. Right, right, you know, right, you get yeah, on t yeah. you get on TV. I don't care if you're big or small. You get on TV and someone says my balls are hot. They going you know, people. <laughs> yeah, are Woodley's not saying it. that. You know, Woodley's not saying that, and he's not big enough and black enough and 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 not black enough, but careless enough. Right, you know, right, like, right, 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 right. Like Derek Lewis is genuinely like from Houston, and his balls were probably hot at the moment. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, now, do your there, balls get if, hot if, during if fights? Woodley, yeah, your balls get hot. Oh. Yeah, I mean, if you're black. But Woodley... Come on. Woodley, it's a black thing? I mean, yeah. I mean, Why would your black... All right, go on. <laughs> <laughs> like your balls get hotter than your black. I mean, doesn't, doesn't black attract heat? I mean, anyways, listen. <laughs> fair point, fair point. Go on. <laughs> what I was saying is Woodley is just a little bit more polished. He's a champion, and uh, yeah, if, uh, if he wants to... If he wants to get the notoriety that Derek is getting, I should I, I suggest him be reckless. Now, um, that's a good point. Now, Woodley Colby, who do you think wins that fight? Woodley, right? Woodley beats the shit out of Colby. Really? Woodley beats the shit out of Colby. The only reason why Woodley doesn't beat the shit out of Colby is to is when is that fight? Is that fight happening? No, but that that's what they're trying to make. Oh, well, yeah, Woodley beats the shit out of Colby, um, simply because he is better in all attributes. In all attributes, as an athlete, as a fighter, as 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 a jiu-jitsu, as a wrestler, as a striker, as a what about cardio? I mean, he's a champion. Yeah, but he has gotten tired in fights. You've never seen Colby get tired in fights. But does he lose those fights? Woodley, yeah. Getting no. tired is one thing. Uh, Getting right. tired and losing is another thing. I mean, it, it he's he's physically. Built in a way that makes you tired <laughs> to do what he does. I mean, I I understand people, you know, in the cardio game. But if you are not tired and you take a loss, I would be extremely exhausted and right, take right, a win right, and right, did yeah. not give a fuck about your cardio. Go ride, go run the mountain with that loss. I'm about to go sit on the couch <laughs> with this W and eat yeah, some Cheetos. You know what that's I mean? A good like, point. Yeah, yeah, great cardio with losses. I don't give a fuck. Um, you know who got really good cardio who takes a lot of losses? Um, bouncy hair guy. Uh. Guido. Clay Guido, yeah, yeah. Great cardio. He is taking a lot of losses with a bunch of energy at the end of the get, <laughs> end of the end of the fight. You know, there's a ton of people with a whole bunch of energy at the end of the fight that that went home on <laughs> with half they check. <laughs> so you can have good cardio. Yeah, it's a good point. It doesn't necessarily mean good wins. Now, all right, now this fight, Cormier versus Black Beast. Yeah. Everyone's saying Cormier, Cormier, Cormier. It seems like that's the the smart answer. Yeah. And Cormier seems to know the only way he loses is by getting caught. Right. And I don't think the Black Beast is better than Anthony Johnson. And no. I think Johnson would probably run through the Black Beast. Prime no. Johnson, at least. No. Uh, you don't think that would happen? No, only because it become like uh, the... Uh, when Anthony Johnson and his prime is like... A, uh, don't take the Black Beast for like his last couple, you know... S- s- wins like even his last one he didn't look like the the man that i had been seeing beat other people you know there are some fights where he looks a little bit more in shape and he looks a little bit more athletic take the best at black beast you know not the ones that we've been seeing lose 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 and then knock the guy out yeah but the one that's doing really good with his jab and he's doing what like i've seen him not just be a lazy knockout beast you know what i mean yeah. a lazy knockout artist so you take that guy and against the best anthony rumble and it's going to be who connects the most you know what i mean and i think that like yeah but you think the best black beast could beat phil davis I mean, Rumble, I mean, just... But Rumble wasn't the wrestler that... Ryan Bader, I mean, just destroy Ryan Bader, Glover Teixeira, I mean... uh, Right, but I see that being a... I I, I think he beat those guys with striking. Yeah. With big, heavy hands. Yeah. You're not naming anyone that Anthony Rumble beat with big, heavy hands like Beast. That's a good point. Well, Bader's got good hands. Who? Bader. Yeah, but he... But not the same. I I would get I rather get punched in the face by Ryan Bader without looking, with a blindfold on, with no gloves, with no gloves. Yeah. Than to have a shield, <laughs> my gloves on, and to be seeing Black Beast's punch. You know what I mean? Like that's a different in punching power, and the punching power makes you makes you move differently. Right. You know what I mean? As far as Anthony coming in and wanting to hit, he's got to to want to hit. You got to you know be acceptable to hits. Right. So. That so that plays differently, but it 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 is a smart money to go with Cormier. But I do believe that everyone knows that he's got a he's got a puncher's chance. We know that. Yeah. He 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 hits his ass. It's, it's a good chance he 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 breaks his fist on that big old head. But he he can't knock him out. He, we know he can knock him out, but I don't think anyone will and has. So Weidman Jacare. Uh, Weidman's the favorite in this fight. Ooh, like uh, he looked great against. I mean, when was the last time Weidman really looked great? It was against, I guess, Kelvin Gastelum was his last uh, big win. You know, he hasn't really, uh, I don't know. It seems like every time he steps up as of late, he, you know, against, um, 
you know, Chris against Romero, uh, against uh, Musasi. Uh, I mean, he, even even what's name almost knocked him out, Jacare. I mean, uh, why Kelvin almost almost finished him, but I uh, knocked him down at least. But Jacare lost to Kelvin his last fight and didn't look that great. Uh, I'm hoping Weidman wins. He's my Long Island boy, but. Yeah. It's gonna be tough. Yeah, it's a toss up. Toss um, up. So I'm gonna go with Jock. Jockery. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Was Chris in wrestling when you were there? Um, I think he was. I think Phil Davis beat him one time when Hofstra came to town. Oh right, 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 right. Penn State. Right, right, right. Sure, it was actually Wyman. Okay. Yeah. No, he did beat Wyman in college. Uh. So, and then, all right, other, other big fights on that. Those are the big ones. Derek Brunson versus Israel against Stylebender. That's oh, going to be a good fight. Yes, Oof. Yes. Um, I know Brunson. He's my boy. He's a good dude. He's a good man. I'm excited for the opportunity, but, man, he's got a tall wall to climb in Stylebender. But I think the grittier you make it for Stylebender, the better. And, and Brunson's a gritty good dude, so... Brunson's like the most bipolar fighter. Like when he just runs in and has his hands down, it goes terrible. <laughs> but when he actually wrestles, he was a college wrestler, yep. uses his skill, he usually wins. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's most wrestlers <laughs> when they use their wrestling and their skills for sure. Um, but yeah, ho- hopefully uh, I-, I like him in that fight. Roxanne Modifari against Sahara Eubanks. Uh, that's, that's, um, that should be a good fight. Um, I like uh, I like Roxanne. She's She's really changed her whole thing down. Um, and then uh, Ben Saunders versus Lyman Good. That's another fight on that card. Uh, I'm proud of Ben Saunders, man. Why is that? Because I've known Ben Saunders for a while, back in my ATT days. And even back in the ATT days, it seemed as though he was on his way out. You know what I mean? Like, he was in Bellator, I think, at the, at the time. And it just seemed like he was, you know... <laughs> The fact that he's still on cards and still fighting and still doing his thing, like I'm like I'm proud of him. Yeah. That's that's longevity. And he's not the um he's not a, a journeyman either. I mean he's getting good cards. He's on a good card. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, he's and he's a guy that could beat anybody. Yeah. Uh, as long as he, he he can beat anybody. He had a great fight with um Alan Joban. Oh my that was a close one. That was, but he's been knocked out his last I think fight his last two fights. He beat Ellenberger. <laughs> I didn't think that was gonna happen. Uh, Jake, Jake's a guy that like uh, I'm happy he retired. I mean, I love Jake. I'm just I think that at a certain point, you just kind of have to, you know, it's just you don't want to. I don't want to see these guys drooling when they're older. Oh yeah, it's hang up time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, have, have you thought about bare knuckle boxing? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. My face is too pretty. I got too many aspirations and movies and and things after this. So uh, yeah, bare knuckle boxing's out for me, especially since I cannot double leg the shit out of someone. Are you still coaching at Calvary Chapel? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm. I got way too much going on right now. Do you miss coaching? Oh, I, I still coach at Black House. I still coach people. I still coach my son. Uh, I'm always coaching, but yeah, you gotta love me coaching. But but you're not doing like privates and stuff anymore. Yeah, yeah. depends on the right private. What does that mean? It means if you're going to pay me $1,000 to show up for an hour. Is that what you get paid? No, but oh. like I said, it <laughs> depends on the right private. I, I'm not doing privates now, but if you want me to do a private, you're going to have to get me off my couch. And you throw the right price at me, I'll be at your house. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean by it takes the right private. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to call this girl right now. Okay. Um, I think that's cool with you. Hold on. Bob Sapp, he, he's, he's in Japan, and it's just, he wants to, it's just, I, I, he gave me a Skype name. It made no sense. And then I tried doing another thing. And uh, it's just, it's, this is a lot better than it used to be, right? Yeah. Back when I used to live in the hood. Yeah. I got to show you my, I actually have a, a wrestling uh, room in my garage. That's I got, I got, I, I have to show it to you. So we're going to call Kay Hansen right now. What's your number? What's your number? I think, and, uh, and your son is, uh, is playing with uh, my daughter. Yeah, man. Which is how old is your son now? My son is four. He'll be five in April, but he's four now. He's four. Wow. He's like the old. And, you, and then how old is the, the youngest one? My youngest one is six months. Now, do you change diapers or your wife do it? 
I do. I, we both do. So. Yeah, I don't mind it. Everyone's like, get a change diaper. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I equally, we equally participated in bringing them here. And then you said Thursday's wife day. Thursday's wife day. Now what? What? what now what happens on, on wife day? And why is Thursday? Day, from day from sun up to sundown, I take care of everything in the house. Really? From all the kids to take pick and dream up to taking them to school to change the diapers to get breakfast, dinner, lunch. All she she literally has a day off. Uh, nice. And then and then and then what does uh, she do usually? I don't know. I don't know. It's not my day. <laughs> Whatever she wants. Do you, do you still keep in touch with any guys from uh, the body shop? No. All right. No, that's a past of mine that I. He's doing good though, that kid. Yeah. Oh, and um, AJ's always gonna be good. He's he's a great athlete. He's gonna be really good. Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, they they put him up against a tough guy last time, and he just he's been wiping everyone out. And then that, that that other kid that yeah. was talk, that kid that was talking shit to you from Ireland got wrecked. You see that, that happened yeah, there? We knew that. We I didn't know that. I, I knew that that was gonna happen. I knew that he wasn't as good as he was making himself to be. Yeah, I, I mean, Tour was protecting him. Yeah, well, he got murked. Hello, is this Kay Hansen? Yes, it is. You're on the MMA Roasted Podcast. It's me and Bubba Jenkins. I don't know if you know who Bubba Jenkins is. He's, uh, he's the brave champion. He was a national champion in wrestling. He was uh, the number one ranked Bellator guy at one point. Uh, and he was the number one recruit in wrestling in the world and out of high school before he got arrested for fingering banging a chick in the back of the bus. But so, uh, oh, Kay, how are you? <laughs> Kay, how are you? Oh, your son just walked in. Uh, I, 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 everything is good. Um, you got a, a big fight. You're on like what a three fight winning streak? Uh, yeah. If you include boxing, then yes. Yeah, and you've been murdering people. I watched you in Invicta. They put you up against a girl that was really good. They were hyping her. You were kind of on the yeah. B, you were on the B side of that fight, and you took her down and mm -hmm. just beat her up. <laughs> so what's yeah. Um that was amazing. Go ahead. No, that was amazing. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I was kind of the underdog in that fight. Um, I originally, I asked for the girl that I actually am fighting now, and they didn't want to give her to me. So they said they had Helen Peralta, and that was like, it was her or it was nothing. So I don't turn down fights. So. Wow. That, no, that, uh, so now, why did you ask for this girl? Um... I, you know, there's like a group of us young uh, professional MMA fighters, 18, 19, 20 years old. And, uh, you know, she's the EBI champ. I just kind of want to separate myself from that group. You know, I think I'm on another level. And uh, I've been fighting a lot of people that are older than me. So I think I've proved that ground at least. Uh, but I wanted to give it a test to someone who's my age and my skill and my experience. Now, if you guys don't know people, Kay Hansen is 19 years old. She's had, she's, uh, what's your record? Four and one, five and one? Three. Three and one. Three and one. Uh, she's a uh, she's a big Trump supporter. She likes guns. Uh, she likes <laughs> country music. And you were a wrestler in high school, right? No, I uh, I'm actually a, a high school dropout. So you drop? <laughs> no, I didn't wrestle in high school. You you, you dropped out of high. What what year did you do uh, drop out of high school? Uh, my junior year. I, I dropped out to train to fight. So. And your and, and your parents are cool with that? Uh yeah um. I, I kind of made my own choice on that one. But, yeah, they supported me fully, um, and it's worked out so far. So <laughs> No, I, I'm telling you, I, I watched your fight. You're like a bully in there. I mean, you just grind it. You go in there, you throw punches, and you just want to kick the crap out of chicks. And uh, I give you a lot yeah, of... I, I'm a really go-forward kind of fighter. And, and I think that that loss you had, um, where they stopped it on, like, cuts, right? Yeah. But that was probably the best thing that happened for your career. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it wasn't like the the easiest thing to swallow, of course, or the, the most ideal thing that could have happened to me, but I think it was the best thing that's happened to me. I'm a different fighter. I have a different mentality. Um, you know, it helped me grow up, I think. I think it just kind of helped me uh, have a reality check, and now I just have a different mentality when I go in there. It's not all rainbows and butterflies when you're fighting. You know what I mean? No, absolutely, absolutely. And then now you – um, I. I I, it says here, I'm looking at your thing. You originally were going to go to Harvard? Yeah, for softball. <laughs> you were that good at softball? Uh, yeah, um, I was really good in school, and um, I, you know, I dedicated my life, my life to softball, and that was my, uh, my whole thing before I uh, started fighting. But um, once I f started fighting, it was like 
nothing else mattered to me. So I stopped going to school junior year and said goodbye to Harvard <laughs> and said hello to the fighting. <laughs> now, was Harvard actually looking at you? Were they, like, recruiting you and like, talking to you? Yeah, I, uh, I had this, the coach's cell phone number, so I was uh, pretty set on it. Um, I was looking at a lot of the Ivy League schools, but um, Harvard was my first choice. But, um, yeah, it didn't work out. <laughs> and then what was your GPA? Um, my GPA was, um, before I, I dropped out, it was a little lower because I had been losing interest. But I, I've always been like a 4.0 above student, honors class, AP classes. Um, I always loved school. Um, and then once fighting came along, I kind of just lost interest in everything else in life. Well, I like it. I mean, look, how old are you, 19, 18, 19? Um, I was 16 when that happened. Oh, wow, 16. Oh, wow. right now? Yeah, I'm, now. Right now I'm 19, yeah. 19 years old. Uh, Bubba, any questions yeah. for this for this badass little girl? Keep charging. Uh, it's going to be a long road of what we think is going to be amazing successes, but sometimes you know you get those little pitfalls in the way, and you just got to know that you can fix the tire and just keep this bitch moving. Sometimes you're going to have to stop for gas. Sometimes you're going to have to patch up a hole in the tire, but you keep that Ferrari on the track and keep it moving forward. Nice. So uh, I don't know if you heard. Did you hear what he said? It was a l cutting out a little bit. He said you should become a uh, stripper and uh, drop out of school. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. No, he said he said keep it moving forward. Sometimes you're gonna run into some obstacles, but don't let anything yeah. anybody tell you what you what you can or can't do. Yeah, that's amazing advice. I wish I wish you would believe that advice until uh, you're kind of forced to with an experience. <laughs> but you're only nice. Look, it's I'm so not, easy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's so easy as a young fighter or as a fighter in general when you haven't got hurt or anything to, like, just think you're going to blow through people. Yeah. But. Yeah, so now now you, I remember you uh, you left training. I think you were somewhere. You Now you're at, what, a Riverside MMA or BJJ or, or 10th Planet? Where are you at? I'm at 10th Planet Fullerton. Okay, and I, I, I saw you training with, like, four-year-olds. Is that your normal... <laughs> Who are those yeah, people? Yeah, I, I started help. Uh, I started helping with the kids' class not too long ago. But uh, yeah, I think it's been it's been awesome. The Ten Slide Fullerton's been uh, a place where I have everything I need right now. Um, I was going like four different places, um, but I decided uh, to just hone in on this little gym, and it's uh, it's really paid off for me. That's awesome. Now, um, I, I would assume that you're, you're a very attractive girl. You're a fighter. You have a American flag tattoo on your arm. You're a big, you're a big NRA supporter. You probably get a lot of fan mail from a, a specific type of, uh, uh, you know, region in, a, in, a, in, a, in America. Is that true? Do you get a lot of like? Are, are, you, are you big in uh, certain places? Um, I, I don't know if I'm big in certain places. Uh, obviously, like that that certain crowd uh, appeals to me. But like as far as fan mail, I don't really uh, I don't give an address or a PO box or anything. So if anything, I get like messages, but um, I don't respond to a lot of them, honestly. Um, but yeah, I guess in that certain crowd, I do I do have like a lot of fans, but uh, nothing too crazy so far. No, I think it's awesome. Look, I look. I'm not the biggest Trump supporter. I'm not really. Uh, I'm. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of in the middle. You know, I'm. I'm in the middle. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm a complete centrist. I sometimes I vote Republican. Sometimes I vote Democrat. But it all it all depends on who I like. You know. But I think that it's great yeah. because I think that. Uh, I think you know a lot of people love Trump and they need someone to get behind. And I think you're a good person to get behind. You're, a, a, you know, a young, educated, smart, fun, good person. So. Uh, you know, if my daughter ends up being like you, I'd, I'd be happy. I would I would support her. Thank you. Congratulations, I, by the way. Oh, no, no. Thank you very much. I would support her. I don't know if I would support her to drop out of – she's going to Harvard. I said, no, drop out and become a fighter. <laughs> uh, I'd be a little nervous. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's what – I think my wife would be a lot more nervous than I'd be. Um, <laughs> so who are some of the pros that you, uh, that you uh, train with? Some of the pros I train with? Um, I don't train with many pros. Um, I train with a lot of uh, high-level grapplers, um, and I bring them in to spar. Um, but I'm pretty much like I, I go out and I get what I need. Um, you know, I don't. I'm not part of a, a big MMA camp. Um, I kind of just put together what I need, and I think it's best that way. I've done it that way for most of my career, and it's worked out great. Um, so I'm gonna keep doing that until it fails me. <laughs> yes. Now, do you, now do you have a, a a boyfriend or no? No, I don't. <laughs> mm. Good. Stay away from that. Uh, like Jessica I yeah. says, uh, Jessica I says says that, that that good 
D-I-C-K ruins fighters. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm spelling it out because Bubba's, Bubba's kid's here. Now, okay, so the girl you're fighting right now, Erin Blanchfield, mm-hmm. she's 2-0. and oh, Yes. Uh, uh-huh. a, a split decision, a doctor stoppage. She's from Long Island or from, mm-hmm. from, from, uh, from New York? But what uh, not- She's from New York, yeah. She trains with, uh, I don't know if you know Donaher. Yep, um, of course. They're a huge gym over there, yeah. She trains with them. Uh, yeah. Um, and Henzo Gracie and all those people over there. And what do we know about her? Um, you know, she's DBA champ, 125 champ. Um, she's 2-0. Uh, her last fight was a decision. The one before that was a doctor stoppage. Um, I think it's, she's a grappler, obviously. But uh, I think it's going to be a great fight uh, stylistically for me. I think it's a fight that not a lot of people are paying attention to, but they should. I mean, we're both 19, both young guns, prospects coming up. Um, I've been trying to hype it a little more as it gets uh, closer, but... Seems like people aren't as interested as they should be, honestly. You know what? I saw your tweet about that. You said, how come ESPN, Ariel Hawani? Yeah. How come no one cares about your fighters? And you know what? Yeah. Uh, Kay, here's some advice, right? You're right. You're mm-hmm. absolutely right. It's, yeah. B- it's BS. You're a professional fighter at the highest level. But that's not what you got to yeah. be. But don't focus on that, okay? That's, yeah, a, that's, a, that's a distraction. You got, you got to focus on the undefeated girl that you're fighting in, in two weeks, okay? The rest of that stuff, it lets, let someone else care about that. That's, that. that's not your fight right now. Yeah. Seriously. Thanks, Dad. Am, am, I, am I right, Bubba? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. Now, I'm, 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 now, when, now, okay, now when is this fight? Because I know our listeners are going to want to hear about it. When's this fight? Uh, it is December 16th, or I mean uh, November 16th in uh, Shawnee, Oklahoma. Shawnee, Oklahoma, November 16th. If I want to sponsor you, Okay, I'm, I'm sure a lot of our a lot of our listeners like you. You know, they're they're. Uh, what? How, how do I sponsor you? Uh, you can just message me, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, anything. Uh, my email's on my Instagram too, so I always check my emails. Uh, so any anyone who wants to sponsor me, you can go ahead and do that. Yes. Well, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Now, thank you. This girl's got good grappling. Are we gonna now? It says she's 125. Aren't you 115? Yeah, I am one to see. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I don't think I'm that small. Um, to me, I don't really care about size. I look at it as like a whole another division. So it's twice the opportunities, twice the fights. Um, so I'm not concerned about the weight. Uh, I do think I am a natural straw weight, but um, I I have gone back and forth before. And 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 uh, what's your walkout song gonna be? Um, my walkout song is gonna be. Uh, the Johnny Cash song. I don't remember the name of it. Nice, nice. Oh, uh, God's gonna cut you down. There we go. Well, listen, Kay. Good luck with this fight. We love having you on the podcast. You're awesome. Uh, after you win the championship, don't forget about us, okay? <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was Kay Hansen. Thoughts, Bubba? She's very young. Um, very young and just getting started. Um, bright eyed and bushy tailed. I remember. <laughs> I remember when I was worried about ESPN. <laughs> really? No. I just care that people want to fight me. Yeah, right? I mean, she can, I mean, that, I understand what she's saying, and, yeah. I, and she's right, but she's got bigger problems about them. You know, she's got yeah. the girl in front of us. All right, so Bubba, what, what do we got coming up we can promote? Uh, Bubba J, what am I doing? Follow me, guys. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on all these places. <laughs> I got the shoe coming out. I'll be dropping some hints. I got a couple things dropping that uh, that the world is going to be excited about. Okay. And I'm just going to leave that in the air. Like, yo, keep following me. The Lord's going to talk to me. You got to meet me here at this time t- type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like it. Just, I like it. Just, just check in on me. Well, listen, people. This Friday night, I'm in <laughs> Mesquite, Nevada, the Casablanca uh, Hotel and Casino. Um, and then uh, November 30th, I'm at the South Point Casino in Vegas. And November 24th, December 24th to December 30th, I am at the Stratosphere in Las Vegas. And then uh, February 12th to the 17th, I'm at the Calgary Cave, the Comedy Cave in Calgary. Uh, if you want to follow me at Adam Comedian or AdamHunter.com, uh, you can see all my stuff. If you shop on Instagram, go to, uh, not Instagram, shop on uh Amazon. Go to adamhunter.com, click on the Amazon banner, and then get whatever you want. Uh, Thank you guys so much. Take care and have a great week.